Hello there. Welcome to episode two of this prayer series. As we jump back into this study, I want to remind us that if prayer is going to mean anything, it's got to be based on the character of God. Now, Jesus' disciples came to him one time and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And he gave them a model prayer that they could base their prayer life on. And when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, he began by affirming God's characteristics. Namely, he affirmed God's holiness. What does it say in Matthew 6, verse 9? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now that's affirming something about God's character. He is holy. And so our prayers must be based on God's character. Talking about holiness, this is something that Moses learned in his first meeting with God. You know, Moses saw that burning bush up on the mountain, and he went up to check it out. And as he approached it, God spoke to him from the burning bush. And in Exodus chapter 3, verse 5, it says that God said, Do not come near, take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you're standing is holy ground. Now, what made that ground holy? It was the presence of God Almighty. And God wanted Moses to know that if he was going to approach him, if he was going to talk to him, he needed to remember that God is holy. Later on in the scripture, in Isaiah, Isaiah was given a very awesome vision of God's throne room. And he saw the, the angels, the uh, seraphim there, and they were calling out to one another. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. They emphasize it there three times. Holy, holy, holy. God is holy, and he will be approached as holy. Daniel, in his uh, terrifying visions that he received from God in the book of Daniel, he responded with a prayer after that. And he affirmed again, he acknowledged this in Daniel 9, 7, To you, O Lord, belongs righteousness. Daniel realized he couldn't even uh, talk to God about the things he saw until he acknowledged that God is holy, God is righteous. When Peter realized just who Jesus was when they were out fishing, he fell at Jesus' feet and he cried out, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. So we must keep this in mind, God's holiness, his righteousness. We have to keep that in view when we pray. But you know, there's another almost seemingly opposite side of God's character that we also have to keep in mind when we pray, and that is God's mercy toward sinners. Now James, in his little letter, reminds us in James 5.11 that God is compassionate and merciful. I want to just uh, read to you Psalm 103 verses 8 through 12. Listen to this. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. And as far as the East is from the west. So far does he remove our transgressions from us. Well, that's awesome. God's awesome holiness seems to separate him from sinful people, but his tenderness for his creation draws us closer to him. Now, it's, it's unmistakably certain in the Bible that God is infinitely holy, and at the same time, He's compassionate towards us. We have to keep both of those things in mind. Now, what does all that have to do with prayer? Prayer can have no meaning unless it takes into account God's total nature. He is holy. We come to him on those grounds. He's love. We pray knowing that he's concerned about our needs. And because he's merciful, God understands and cares about human need. And most of the time, we see God taking the initiative. It is God who tells us in Matthew 7, 7 through 8, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, 
and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, it will be opened. See, God desires to provide for his own. We're reminded in Psalm 23, very familiar. The Lord is our shepherd. Matthew 6, verse 30, it says there, But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? See, God cares about you. God loves you, and he desires a relationship with you. He draws you to himself. And there's so many places in Scripture where God clarifies for us just how caring, just how loving he is, how intimate he wants to be with us. Do you know him today? Oh, don't turn him away. He won't turn you away even though he knows you better than anybody else does. I invite you to go and meet with him today. He's waiting for you now.